can't sleep. I was completely out within 10 minutes. Quietly get up and walk over to my terminal. Here's how Yoko's online. She sent him with my avatar. Yoshi prefers this over text. Yoko. What's up, Sela? How's the android? Exactly why I wanted to talk. Why don't you tell me more about her manufacturing process? She acts too human-like. Don't you like it? I thought you were sick of robots being so cold and repetitive. Yeah, but still, I think it's weird. Why would anyone build an android without any real purpose? Of course she's got a purpose. Does the fourth generation... Oh. <clears throat> Does what the fourth generation couldn't. Be human, you know? So you knew it. And so she's a bunch of code. Really well programmed one, but code nonetheless, right? I knew what? She's living with you, so you can have a friend, nothing else. Didn't you buy it for that reason? Why not hard to be a friend? Every time I remember she acts that way, I think because she is following rules. I don't know. I don't like it. I know it's all fake. What if I'd never told you she was an android? There's more than enough important stuff you didn't tell me. What's up with all the questions? Do you do you want to return her? How did you get Mara Yoko? Told you, I can't say. Don't think Tanya would fix any of your problems anyway, right? Right, because you stole her from Veta Labs. There's no way I can fix something like that. Don't know what you're talking about. Are you sure you can't trust her just because she's an android? Don't you think there's some other reason for that? What else could I could it be? Always had a real fragile self-esteem, you know. Don't change the subject. Can I talk about it right now? Gotta go. Do you think you're getting out of this? I'll see you very soon. That's what I good night. Yeah, she's definitely hiding a lot of shit. Log off the holonet. Maybe Yoga's right. I've been overthinking. I've been proud of it for years, and it's only gotten worse since they demoted me. Maybe this whole thing over who built Mara or why they what they did isn't a big deal, but I can't stop thinking about it. I need to sleep. I'll think about this tomorrow. It's too much for me. I haven't been involved in a situation like this in a really long time. I don't think I'm ready for it. Project Mara. Ten days before the Sinichia incident. The soul suffers too much, it develops a taste for misfortune. Albert Camus. Can't sleep. It's been it's barely been an hour since I went to lay down on my bed. I'm still worried. Ugh. Wouldn't be thinking about any of this if I hadn't trusted Yoko in the first place. I was still asleep. I'll leave her alone. Decided to grab a snack and get myself dressed. Seems that she is waking up. Uh, um, good morning. Good morning. Is something wrong? Eh, it's nothing. Do you want some breakfast? No, it's still dark. Why are you up at this hour? Can't keep this up. I need to know what's going on. Something came up at work. I'll come back soon. It's Sunday. Come back to bed. My job. Go back to sleep. I passed out on the futon again, closed her eyes. Perfect. Run through my desk until I find my old filter pass. Hope it still works. In my house and take a train to the police station. Get in from the parking lot so nobody notices me. Now head to the armory. Guys are quite drowsy. They recognize me, but they don't bother to ask what I'm doing. I take one of the thermo... Throw... Whatever that is. Camo outfits and head over to Velda's laboratories. It's raining. This outfit isn't as effective in rainfall. Need to get inside. Oh, that looks fucking cool. Trucks seem to constantly be constantly getting in and out. 
so I sneak in once they open the gates. Two guards are going to pass by the metal detector. It will wait until they do so. So, one of the armored trucks that left the yard was attacked by some sort of terrorist group. Thing is, the police went there. And get this, now there's rumors floating around that they were carrying child androids. Hey, are you trying to get us fired? It's a little shit, don't believe it. But they don't ever allow us to get inside and see what's inside the trucks. Do you think it's kind of fishy? No. I just know they built us into some really shitty stuff. Then there's that other thing. What kind of terrorist group has enough power to actually attack a vaulted armor truck? They actually have a bunch of escorts. Imagine he's here, you move your ass. Patrol isn't over yet. Eh, okay, okay. If they ever attack this place instead of the trucks, I hope we're not on the same shift. Uh, as both guards get out of my way, I finally get a chance to sneak inside a plant. The facility is pretty well, so I know exactly where they keep stuff. They will keep stuff they'd rather have hidden. Make my way downstairs until I reach the bottom of the building. The elevator's doors open and a group of guards emerge. Security down here seems, seems to be tighter. Follow the guards until they reach a wall with a computer. Turn around the corner by a stay put. Make sure nobody is around and swipe my card. It works! Oh. We're kidding about the whole child thing. It's pitch black, so I have to access the computer and turn on the lights. I have a lot of files here. Ugh, bright. Seeing so some kind of incubation area. I suppose the new creations spend their last development stages here. Nobody around. It's likely that they got security cameras. Need a hurry. Connect to one of the terminals. Take a look at the data. Every single subject has a serial number, name and recipient address. There are different Velda facilities all over the Empire. I know some of them. They never stopped their research about self-development in androids. They just keep it a secret. I check every capsule. Each and every android is already in their adult stages. Oh, okay, I thought this was a child because I mean, it kind of hunched over it. It looks pretty small, but anyway, did they find a way to stop the constant thirst for growth and knowledge they experience? They did. It probably, it'd probably be a mistake to destroy all progress Velta made. After all, science does require testing. However, I highly doubt they are doing this solely for the sake of scientific progress. They only have a hidden agenda. They won't turn them into blue-collar workers. I'm sure of that. Current androids are already perfect slaves. Walk over to the computer at a first glance. This one seems to be empty of any files, and that pig, and that piques my curiosity. Seems to be something different here. Hmm. Bypassing. Okay, we got stuff here. Oh, okay, I can't do any of them. Is that access denied? Hmm, okay, probably for the best. Hang on, let's go, because I see the Mara project data up there, so we'll do that one last, but anyway. Um, yeah, data entry 1893C, black seeds. Today we carried out the last, last test using black seeds, which is. 87% chance rate. 27% of the results required for the satisfactory completion of this work. A sample and the required day will be sent to Velta's production lines for mass production. It is estimated that using this improved Black Sea model, model of the transformation project will be completed in, within the next 20 years. How about this one? A Prosper. The ability of Propam to act on a selected partial agnostic. Oh, there's like more there, hold on. Okay, yeah, there wasn't anything else there, okay. Ability uh, of Propam is to act as a selected partial agnostic of serotonin receptors and even a 
as a complete an antagonist and combined with other drugs such as an alcohol has been slightly increased. Psychedelic effects have been minimized and it is somewhat less stimulating and positive as long as it's taken in the right doses. Low doses of stimulant and compliance effects are predominant and the psychedelic effects only increase at higher doses. Effects take longer to appear than the previous version. After intake, it may take one, one to two and a half hours to take effect. After inhalation, which can be more painful than other substances, effects take five to seven minutes to appear so that it is recommended that they are administered orally or sublingually. As an added effect of the and a request of Mr. Blank, drug now has an increased reduction in fatigue, so it may allow the user to go for a longer number of hours without sleep. Spending too many hours without rest could cause a sudden collapse that the user will not notice any fatigue while taking the medication. It may also cause insomnia problems for the user if they have not had them previously. Hmm. Wonder if that has to do with us, maybe, because we're dealing with insomnia and stuff. Anyway, the. Uh, Teleco Project. Two of the 78 subjects taking part in the Teleco Project have been classified as successful, though not all the subjects have died in the test. These two are the only ones who have a full list of capabilities added after the modification of the genetic code and the injections of artificial nano organizers in addition to the new strain of protocells. The added capabilities are generation of cellular level tissue, uh, organ structure, and even the whole body, structural and physiological shape changes, mono controls and modification, voluntary activation of genes and modulation of DNA trans uh, transcriptions, voluntary release of superfast acting testosterone, almost immediate transition between type 11B and 11A fiber muscle fibers. Shadowy learning in muscle tissue improved coordination between fibers, immediate redistribution and transformations of proteins and fats, voluntary reinforcement of bone density and tissue structures, and capacities already found in subject of the witch series. Since these subjects have achieved control of these added capabilities, but not able to use them to their full potential, they'll be classified as proto-telecos. Yeah. Okay, and then there's the Witch Project of Bandon. After data and research with the Witch Project were brought to light, all the staff being transferred to work on Project Teleco, since Teleco seems to be more promising than Witch. The latter's research has been completely cancelled. I know what this Witch Project was. Okay, and there's Project Chrysalis. Preparation to begin the revival of Project Chrysalis has been completed and staff will be transferred to the new facilities within two months. With the new semi-organic bodies resulting from the research in the Synergia project, it will be a matter of moving the information from a human brain rather than copying it, thus keeping the consciousness intact. When the neurons have been transplanted, constant levels of cell regeneration must be maintained and a new brain must be prevented from aging. Hmm. Okay, what about phases? Oh, access denied, of course. Uh, access denied and empty. Hmm. Okay, what's this Mara project there? Oh, it's denied as well, for fuck's sake. Everything is denied. There isn't really anything else to click on. Uh, yeah, sure, we don't really have much of a choice. Uh, I have one of these androids living in my house, but what did you get me into, Yoko? Other than that, I can only find some information about their hardware. Nothing that proves that proves they're the same I already know. I hear a noise behind me. They tell me the lights turned on by themselves. Ah, oh, fuck, here we go. Yes, and you can check the security camera if you've got any doubts. 
Clearly androids didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, it was totally androids, not me. Once they lit the door open, take the opportunity to sneak out of the room without anyone noticing. Take the time, same path I used before to exit the building. Uh, we didn't really find out that much. Instead of going back home, I head to Yoko's shop, still wearing the camo outfit. Cold's closed, but the lights are on. More close I slam the shutters until Yoko rolls them up and lets me in. Oh great, she's got friends. Celia, what you doing at these hours? What's with the get up, huh? Three figures are with her. One of them wearing her gang's typical red clothes, probably her underling. Can't see the other two. Try to look at their faces, but they stay in the dark. One of them whispers something to Yoko before leaving the store. How could you sell me a stolen Volta android? Do you know she is a singularity? Do you realize the kind of trouble I just got into thanks to you? Lucas Binion approaches me, but she stops her. Chill, it's Celia. Told you about it before. Leave us alone. Yes, ma'am. The fuck is Project Mara? How do you know? I knew it. I was sure you knew about it. What the hell's gone? What the hell's wrong with you? Why did you have an illegal android? Why did you sell her to me without saying anything? Well, it's a long story. I know you understand if you hear me out. Well, I'm listening. Go ahead then. Tell me why I shouldn't just arrest you now. Oh, did you come to arrest me? Oh. Of course not, but still, you need to explain yourself. It all happened around a week ago. Someone reached out to me. Some kind of hacker from the Yellow Sea. Uh, it was all fucking planned, of course it was. A hacker from a rebel army. I feel a lot safer now. Might even sense us death for working with the enemy. This is great. The thing is, he asked me to help attacking a builder truck. First, I didn't accept his offer, but he convinced me he'd divert the convoy from their route. And that's what happened. Attack went good and we stole four androids, alright? Looked around the truck and they carried around the pods with androids inside. Thought they'd be fancy fifth generation ones. All I had to do was forge a license and then I sell them out on the black market. Why am I not surprised? Took a capsule to my store, opened it up to see how it looked. And the hacker talked to me about Project Mara. Some kind of a controlled singularity, but I don't really know anything else. You sold it to me even though you knew she was a singularity? But that ain't a bad thing. Just listen to me. It seems Velta was, was still working on a singularity even after the 4th gen disaster. But with a different approach. We call it the synthetic intelligence. Just think of it like a baby. Don't know anything. They act like other people because they mirror what they see. That's exactly what these machines are doing. Problem is, Baby eventually stops imitating and starts to develop their own ideas. Because their mind ain't limited to a specific purpose, kind of. But what if an android was able to create their own data? Give them the ability to learn and that's it. Let them grow and learn like a human. I know what singularity is, I just don't get how Velta managed to control it. Velta created a brain, an empty brain like humans, with the same limits minus one. Learning speed. Then the hard actors simulated an entire environment and let her grow. They shaped her personality just like a parent shaped their own kid, teaching her instead of adding the data themselves. While Mara learned what she needed, they gradually moved her from one body to another so they could emulate a growth process. They had been developing a process perfect human replica for years. So Mara's memories weren't implanted in her brain, but are actually hers? She had to learn everything she knows? Yep. They had the simulation room out of the city. All the androids go there to learn. Even if 
everything he told me was just true. If those are somehow managed to create androids with actual souls, what's the point? How does it benefit them? Dunno, but I know it was impossible to hack those biobrains. I'm sure that's why. I think I know enough, so what am I supposed to do with this now with this android? Celia, Mari isn't just like a human. She thinks and feels like one. Do exactly what you would with any other person. Mara has a license. I gave her one for my other androids. She is completely legal. So they won't find out. So chill, yeah? Hang on. I get why you stole her, but why did you give it her to me? There's filter workers. No, you you really well, Yoko. You're hiding something. I couldn't sell an android like her. I couldn't keep her in the storage room forever, either. I ain't forcing you to believe me, you can do whatever you want. Whatever, lost cost. I still remember Mara is going to wake up completely alone. If I, if what Yoko has just told me is true, then I haven't been treating her too well. I'm still amazed though, it's incredible that they managed to keep working on the fourth generation, and even more. Despite everything what happened, they were successful. So she's basically like a person. Yep. Anyway, what are you going to do? Do you mind if I stay in your place tonight? What about Mara? She can take care of herself. I just need time to think about this. I don't think I can do it there. I'm sure she'll leave you alone if you ask her. Please, Yoko. Alright, let go home. Then, it's about time to close. Yoko loses about the shop. Just need to take some small stairs and walk to the building located on the top of the store. Take the uh, an elevator. It's huge and definitely top of the line. Arrive at her apartment. It's about the same size as mine, but definitely nicer. I wear pajamas. Yoko's are way too small and feel tight on me. Besides, it's been a while since I was able to sleep in the nude. <laughs> Wait, am I? Okay, definitely sleeping naked. Are you going to sleep like that? You don't mind, do you? You know it's more comfortable to sleep like this with my prosthetic arm. I don't mind, I mean, I do, but not in a bad way. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. I always sleep uh, with me at home, so it's embarrassing not to wear anything bad. It's fine, wear whatever you want. Can I turn on the TV? That's why you came here, to watch TV. You just need some background noise. Oh god, bright red. Okay, so tell me, what are you going to do with Mara? Well, nothing I guess. Can't simply throw her away at this point. Just, the whole thing is so weird. I mean, don't have to pretend she's not a machine. She is one. Just accept that the android can be fully conscious and feel exactly like a human does. That's it. There's you know something about her. It's not like she acts like a human. She goes... Way beyond that. Well, Mari is probably the first android with actual feelings in human history. Normal to find it weird. We don't know what was going on in her head. It's incredible that Vela ma managed to run this experience in secret for so long. Glad, in a way. You and your twisted moral sense. You're not one to talk. Remind you that you aren't exactly a model citizen. Which I mean, what I mean is, if Mara is actually part of the latest generation of androids, pretty much human and with a control of singularity, in the end, maybe those experiences were really worth it. That's what I've been saying for years. You finally agreed with me. But creating an android with a soul seemed impossible just a few years ago. Even now, I find it hard to believe if it weren't for the fact I live for one. And she ain't gonna be the last one. You just you always talked about how everything would change in the future. Did you forget about that? Yes, but but you know what happened after the, they prohibited any advance of singularity research. What would we never see an android with actual feelings? It's wrong. Now that you finally accepted it, please take care of Mara. I gave her to you because I knew you'd keep her safe. And it wouldn't surprise me if Velta was looking for her. It's fine if you take her outside, or even if they see her, but if something strange happens, 
As I try to take her away, give me a call. Oh, uh, the TV can go down. I mean, there are TVs nowadays that can do that. <laughs> Just wasn't expecting it. Hi, you know, I'm just sleeping here. It's been a while since the last time I came. We just spent a lot of time together. We used to do so many things uh, together back then. You haven't changed at all. So, who's the new victim of your urges? Doubt Mara's into it. You can do whatever you want. She's totally correct in it. In case you didn't know. Who knows, maybe she even has a crush on you. Come on, don't be stupid. Poor thing lived with the same fake family her whole life, you know. I wouldn't find it weird if she fell in love with her sweet, caring mistress. Well, I mean, I haven't really been sweet or caring. What about sex with it? Whatever, sex with androids isn't legal anyway. I don't think it's really legal so as long as nobody knows. It's legal or well, not his relative, who cares? I was so aware and you sold her, and now I'm a Rona. Doesn't make us slavers. No way, but still, you should start treating, treating her like a human instead of a machine. I'll try, but for now I'm gonna sleep. Mickey, you just can't accept that you like Mara. You grow attached to her. That's dumb. No matter how human she acts, I can't fall in love with a machine. You sure about that? I don't like you can get to choose something like that, you know. Let's talk about something else. Whatever, you know I'm right. By the way, I broke her hearing mechanism. Don't you ask how I can't simply take her to some mechanic, but I don't have the tools I need to fix her. Mm, you're right. No one person might have what you need, but you need to go to the slums around the docks. Right by the sewers. Can you tell me who it is? Because everyone there's either a mugger, a beggar, or part of a gang. Just be careful around him. Everything's gonna be fine. He's the only one who can sell you this, these super rare parts. But you don't really have a choice. There's a catch though. Go bring Mara with you, or he'll straight refuse to sell anything. And keep an eye on him. <sighs> fine. I'm talking about Yoko's latest shenanigans with that gang for a few minutes, we lay down on the bed and drifted off to sleep soon after. Blood. I don't like the sounds of this one. Nine days before the Synergia incident. We're getting quite close to it. Every existing thing is born without reason, prolongs itself out of weakness and dies by chance. John Paul... Oh, I'm going to try to pronounce that last name. Dawn already. Oka invites me to stay for breakfast, but I decide to head home instead. I hope Mara is okay. I feel bad about leaving her alone, but I need time to think things over before I can spare spend more time with her. If she actually feels something, then I don't want to treat her like a machine. I arrive at home, but Mara is nowhere to be seen in the bedroom. There's some lights coming from the bathroom, so I open the door and take a look inside. Mara's right there, taking a bath, eyes closed. She hears the door, she looks up at me, and her face flushes bright red. Can I help but stare? Oh, <laughs> hi! What are you doing here? Get out! I walk out of the bedroom and slam the door shut. Don't know what just happened to me. This isn't my first time seeing her naked. I know she's just an android, but still. I open the door again. Right now, out the bathtub, wrapping a towel around her body. You're pervy. What are you? Oh, <laughs> we're just gonna grab a tit? Okay. I walk up to her and as if something was pushing me, I I can feel my heart hammering wildly. I'm reaching out to her. I rest my hand over her chest. Rob drops the towel as soon as she feels my touch. She's warm and I can feel her heart beating. Everything about her seems so real, so perfect. Look up right into her eyes. Everything in the world apart from us vanishes as I stare into them. I felt this before. No, I really learned my lesson. It won't happen again. I can't let it happen again. Turn around and hastily walk out the door, looking down the entire time. Close the door and lean against it. Just get dressed already. 
After a few minutes, Mara comes out of the bathroom fully dressed, although her hair is still damp. What was that? I was just... Uh, I'm sorry. Best stay quiet for a few seconds. Where were you? At Yoko's. I wanted to talk to her. We don't dare to look into each other's eyes until a few seconds pass. I was worried. I'm sorry. Hey, there's something I need to tell you. Uh, what is it? About your past. I'm completely aware that you're an android. How'd they explain it to you? Mario relaxes and now sigh at my question. She is almost disappointed. Dad told me. Gave me this long story about how I was different to humans. And they didn't say anything about you being a special kind of android? No, am I? Could say you're rare and wouldn't that be enough to describe you. You're unique. Ah, my, thank you. Like you actually feel something when you look at me, don't you? Well, yes. What about you? See, uh, that's the problem. Problem? I mean, it's not like an actual problem. What I'm trying to say is that other androids don't feel anything. Ever. Oh, you were talking about that? How do you know? Talk to plenty of androids, and to me it seemed like they could feel. A lot of them, actually. They just emulate it. They don't actually feel anything, but you actually do, I think. Does it really matter? Of course it does. What sets human apart from mindless, soulless machines? Still, I don't really... I don't think it really changes anything. It changes everything. If someone forces you here to make a choice, then it means you didn't really make it yourself. So it basically becomes a lie. Hmm. Either way, I'm glad you think I'm special. Stomach grumbles. I completely forgot how long I've gone without food. Reminds me, I forgot to take the camera outfit back to the station. Left the yogurt out. I doubt I'll ever see it again. I was now staring at my bookshelf, looking for a specific book. What do you want? Do you have a cookbook? I grab my hand and takes me to the kitchen. I put a drawer under the counter and take out a tight book, completely covered in dust. This was already here when I moved in. I reached through the pages, looking for a recipe we can make with a few ingredients I have around the house. Spaghetti bolognese? Without meat. You don't have any kind of meat. So, plain spaghetti. Didn't we, uh, really need a cookbook for that? Do you know how to cook it? No, not really. I ain't always cooked for me. Right the cookie pot, the only one I have. Fill it with water and put it on the stove. After discussing for a bit how high we should set the heat, I want to bring the water to a boil with the noodles already in. Now what? Do you know how long it takes? The recipe says we wait until the water boils. Wait, let me show you something. It should be ready once we're back. Mara heads to the bathroom and comes back out with a small plant in a pot. Where did you find that? You told me how to take care of plants back in the lab. Where did you get the pot? I stole it, but it was for a good cause. Huh. Why would they teach you gardening? I don't know, but they gave me different lessons to each and every one of us. How were the other androids? My siblings? Well, I didn't know them too well, but I know some of them just went out for walks and chats. Others learned to use weapons. Now others, they were the ones that left the facility every week, but they never told us why. You're not concerning at all. I decided to check on the food. I can hear her yelling from the kitchen. It's burning! Quickly turned on the cooker and moved the cooking pot away. Try to take noodles out of the pot with a spoon, but I fail miserably. They're stuck. <laughs> we can always try eating noodles on top. Grab whatever we could salvage and dump it into the strainer. I was so there's two plates. Clean out that pot is going to be hell. Barely it's soaking. That's it. 
completely plain. You don't have any cheese nor tomato sauce. Kitchen makes me sad. I should have ordered a pizza. I ain't always brought whatever ingredients she needed that day. So you're going back to work tomorrow? Are you going to be out all day? Yes, but I won't stay for a whole day. They only pay me four hours a day. Wait most because... Well, I'll wait more because I don't have anything else to do. Come back as soon as my shift ends. Aren't you afraid of being fired? I mean, they would have fired me a long time ago, but I'm still there, so... They haven't fired me yet, so I doubt they ever will. If they want to, then so be it. Hmm. When did you turn so callous? Always have been. Heh, <laughs> alright. Why the fuck are you shirtless? <laughs> well, everybody seems to like getting naked in this game. <laughs> have you seen anything strange? No, oh, the android is acting quite normal. Seems like she has started to grow attached to Celia. For fuck's sake, can you not watch me? Uh, uh, this is not good. Ah, uh, that's good news then. Wouldn't be so sure. She's not a comp companion android. Well, these models can be unpredictable. Still, if they're not following her programming, that means the project was a failure. Oh, of course they fucking set me up. Hey, everything's a fucking setup for me. <laughs> Feels like I'm being useful. Anything and everything at this moment. Do you see the plant? What about that? There's something there. I know, it's interesting. Maybe the android simply considers Celia her safest way to survive. I doubt it. If only we had access to the other ones. Boss said we can't. Just need to keep watching for now. Understood. Eight days until this energy incident. Log 046. A plane or something. So they woke up yelling once again. Can I get a microphone signal? I'm on it. Celia, did you have the same dream again? Are you okay? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Okay, six days before the Sinner GA incident. Look, 78. Here. Celia cooked some, something for Mara. I guess Celia hasn't really changed. Do you think it might happen again? What happened over ten years ago? It seems likely. What are you talking about? Definitely not the uh, fourth gen incident thing. Did you make it for me? Yeah, I thought it'd be I uh, bleh, thought it'd be fine if I did something once in a while. Thank you. Nom. It's so yummy. Nom nom nom. <laughs> Phew. I'm glad you like it. Okay, log ninety four. Five days before the incident. Yeah, we're going through these days pretty fucking quickly. <laughs> Been talking to Yoko. I think I'll be able to fix your broken ear soon. Are you sure? I don't want things to end up badly like they did last time. Anything will be fine, I promise. Log 101, four days before the Synergy incident. Nightmares again. Looks like she's waking up. Jesus, she's coming in sweat. Some nightmare. I was hugging her. They started when Mara arrived, but her medical records say she stopped having them years ago. How interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that is a good point, because the yeah, nightmares have started up plus the seizures as well since Mara arrived. I hmm. wonder why she's a coincidence. What is it? It's interesting how Mara triggered these kind of responses from Celia. Hmm. Wondering if it has to do with the um, previous crush on a robot from before, 
when it was bringing memories back uh, subconsciously and it's causing her to have these things brought back up again. Anyway, uh, whatever, I need to meet with her in an hour. I need to get ready. Let me go my, by myself today. I want to see if she is more relaxed that way. Are you sure? Yes, just make sure they last patrol around. Get us something boring. Alright. Yellow Ocean. Perhaps one did not want to be loved so much to be him. I didn't get to read that. George Orwell, 1984. Are you sure you'll be okay? Yeah, I told you nightmares aren't that big of a deal. And why do you have to go to work so early? It's dark. I had to do it sometimes. I shift chains. Try to get us to sleep while I'm out, okay? Mmm, fine. Mara turns around and snuggles on her blanket. I eat something, then head to the bathroom to brush my teeth. Plant so has grown surprisingly big. Well, the space it takes up, at least I have to admit, makes the room livelier. Carl and Dara should be arriving soon. But the last few weeks of working have been really calm so far, though Mara's kept me distracted during my entire free time. I can hear the noise of the car engine in front of the building, so I leave quickly to not make them wait. It's not them. How strange. They're late. Got a message on the Hornet. Celia, Carl is in a bit of a pinch, so I'll pick you up. I'll arrive shortly. Hmm, alright. Button on my coat, but it's a bit cold outside. Guy Carl isn't around for once. Don't feel comfortable with him around. Can always feel his eyes digging into me. Feels like he has killer eyes. Jello shows up in the company old company's old car instead of the van. Get inside. Windows are foggy and it smells better than usual. Good morning, Celia. Hello, you look happy today. Did something happen? Not really. So, scheduled patrolling? Yes, everything should go smoothly tonight. Perfect. Dolly drives for a few minutes until we reach our point in area. On that, she drives around the block, pulling over to the side every few minutes so we can rest. It's cold. Do you mind if I turn up the heat? Sure. Hey, you don't really have to say anything if you don't want, but what do you think about Kyle? I know you're different from him. From him? What do you mean? I mean, you, Velta, is working with me for a reason. I'm not here to take care of me. There's something else I don't know. Yeah, we found that out just previously. Hmm, I can only tell you one thing. Trust me. Go ahead, tell me. No, I mean, that's the thing I was trying to say. Trust in me. Uh, continue patrolling for the rest of the shift. Make some small talk, but I don't bring up the topic again. I already know she won't say anything. Still, what she said before piqued my interest. Trust me. Pull over to the sidewalk and a figure gets close and knocks on my window. Roll it down. Uh, hi. Uh, some few I got there. What do you want? You? What else? Don't have any change. Today, at the docks. Wanted to make sure you don't forget. Yoko talked about me, didn't she? What? Wait, you know Yoko? Now that I look closer, this isn't a homeless person. Same commercial android I met a few weeks ago. Just wearing a co costume. I thought, uh, I mean, I thought you wanted to pick Mara's ear, didn't you? Uh-huh. Go to the docks on the far side of the district. Look for a scrapper. He'll tell you how to find us. Me. Come today. It's the only chance you'll get. Bring her, of course. The hell, Yoko? What kind of crap do you get me into again? Now I'm supposed to meet yet another criminal? Amazing. After his message, the android walks to an alley, but she deactivates and drops to the floor, completely lifeless. 
Who was that? Just a hobo. She was certainly persistent. Who was that? Let's get out of here. We can park somewhere else. Okay. I don't know why I'm surprised. None of Yoko's contacts are really that safe, but that's putting it lightly. Don't speak much for the rest of the ship. Uh, Dalek drops me by my doorstep. Can't stop my house and change my clothes as fast as I can. I want to make Yoko's friend wait. I was still asleep. I need to wake her up, so I nudge her shoulders. Now, let's go. Need to get area fixed. Makes up with a yawn. Can tell her eyes are making a monumental effort to look at me. Uh, now it's so early. I really don't like the fact that there's so many people keeping an eye on us. I hope I can fix her because that way I can solve two things in the same day. Yes. I'll say a single word. She walks to the bathroom to get dressed and ready to leave. Meanwhile, I open the cabinet while she, I keep spare blankets and press around in there. To open the hidden compartment, grab my old sword or shotgun with an ammunition belt. Hand to my clothes, hoping it won't show. I mean, shotguns are pretty big, aren't they? Put a shotgun in one of my coat pockets. I hope I don't have to use it, but the dogs aren't exactly aren't exactly safe. I can hear Mara opening the door, so I quickly close the hidden compartment. I'm ready. I leave my house and walk to the closest station, where you take a fleeing train to the port area. We've been living together for two weeks. All the awkwardness I feel when I was around her when we first met has, been, has completely vanished by now. Don't want anything to happen tomorrow, so I keep an eye on her. She, can't sim see, bleh. she seems to be happy though, so I guess she's fine. You definitely look took your time to get me fixed. <laughs> uh, fine, I'm sorry. It's hard to find spares for. <laughs> I was joking. Don't worry about it. I had to wait until they could get a replacement. But the place we're visiting isn't safe at all. It's near the Yellow Sea. Equally dangerous and warm. It's fine. I like the sun. Also, you can trust me. I know how to take care of myself. Not like I don't trust you. So, where are we going exactly? I'm not too much sure myself. Actually, I want you to stay near me at all times. Alright. Once the train appears at the docks, walk through the rusty, grimy alleyway leading to the market. Look at our eyes suspiciously, but I don't think it's strange. We stick out like a sore thumb. Good day, ladies. Wouldn't you be interested in getting married? Ain't leg up there, but here in old Mason's church, you can do whatever you want. Marriage isn't illegal in the Empire. The government mad to an android is. Grab him by a jacket and whisper in his ear. Go away. Forget that you saw me here. Seems he understood my message as he ran off down one of the alleys. We keep making our way to the far south side of the district without too many distractions. Apart from the constant hustle and bustle that almost seems like it's trying to pull us apart. Mara grips my arm and manages to stay next to me no matter what. Maybe your life was a lot calmer before, man, but this is the best option I have to get you fixed. Are you kidding me? This is exciting! It's a bit scary, but I don't really mind since I already saw you have a pistol hidden in your coat. Probably shouldn't say that openly. I've seen that before, back on our first day together, when you left me alone in the house. It's a shotgun, and it made me happy you didn't talk about it in such a loud voice. Oops, sorry. It's like it's impossible to hide things from Mara. Let's see if reached the final houses in the area, and decided to look to ask one of the vendors to see if they know anything about the scrapper. Pick one who looks least dangerous. Grubby looking old man surrounded by metal objects with strange shapes. Uh, figurines, flowers, and even feathers. All made out of iron. Excuse me, excuse me old man. Do you happen to know where I can find the scrapper? 
be honest, I don't remember if I know him, kiddo. Buy me something I just might just remember then. Want me to buy something? I only got junk. Junk? That's enough. First, me ain't no scrappy nor blacksmith. It's art. And I'm the mellus. Didn't you see the sign over there? No. Oh, that a uh, piece of trash fell down last week. And towards a sign that uh, metal working. Ain't no like him rest of it is. Just gathered around the dump. I make art. You he has some really pretty things here. See? You can learn a thing or two from that little girl. She got good taste. Who are you, by the way? She came with me, so if you want to say something to her, you can say it to me. Hey, little girl. Do you like the flower? Ask your girlfriend to buy it and we'll, I'll take both of you to the warehouse. What do you think? It's actually really cute. Hey, Mara. It's a deal then, kiddo. <laughs> Was a. It'll be 15 credits. 15 credits for a piece of scrap. I remember only holding the flower and giving her my best, her best puppy eyes. Can't believe I'm doing this. Eh, fine, 15 credits. Now take me to the mechanic. A mechanic? Who knows what they told ya? Uh oh. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? First time we've gone his scene since the attack that night. Should we take action? No, not yet. Can't put another android at risk. Tell the assault team to get ready. Don't let them do anything until I say so. Do you have any idea why you brought them here? I don't know, but it's got to be really important to expose himself like this. You got to serve for now. Get down. So, what you co coming or what? Yes, we are. I just thought I saw something. Hmm. Yeah, she yeah, definitely saw something. Well, the mill is to what seems like a huge abandoned warehouse. Inside, there's a bunker door attached to the concrete wall. Mellis leaves and closes the door barely, leaving a crack. I can hear a noise right above me. Something's dropping from the ceiling. Less than a second, I'm holding my shotgun, hiding it partially with my coat. Don't pull it out trigger yet. Just a button hanging on a cord. Hooray! You have incredible reflexes. Just as I expected from you, Celia. Come on, come inside. You just got to press the button. I press the button. Seems to scan my fingerprints. Bunker door opens slowly, revealing a small room filled with warm lights. My and I look at each other and she pu pushes me forward. Doesn't seem like she's scared. Walk through the door and immediately see a few figures inside the room. Are they human? They are, they look like scavengers. Well, I think I recognize a couple of them from when we uh, visited Yoko a few days ago. Finally! I finally get to got you to come here. Please, let me introduce myself. <clears throat> My name is Sal. Those are Sal and Sal. It's him again. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Sal has a talked a lot about you. It's great to see you in person after our encounter at the station. Yes, and you took us away from that child's body. I appreciate it a lot, honey. See, I told you she was the best. I know why you came here. You want me to help you fix your little girlfriend? But why don't you hang out for a bit? Been watching you for so long. It made me really happy to talk to you alone. The little show was incredible, but I came here to install a new eardrop for Mara. Nothing more. I, ah, you're as cold as ever. Hmm, I love it. Can't install anything here, but I can give you the eardrum. Actually, I've already got it right here, ready for delivery. Go to me then, so I can get away from you. 
Hey, why didn't you talk to us about your girl? She is very special, isn't she? I'd love to have a one like her in my collection. There's one, I actually have a lot of them already, but not two alike. Wonder what Velda's planning to do with them. Take out my shotgun and aim at the smaller one. She means the one talking now. Calm down, Missy. Sal can be very rash at times. We won't want to hurt you or your partner. We're not readers. I agree with Sal. She's cute. Well, the both of you are cute. Although we can definitely fix that white hair of yours. Give you a bright pink dye job. Look gorgeous on you. Um, actually, we aren't a couple. Huh. <laughs> I'm technically not a hacker. Uh, Alright, you can have your eardrum once you pay for it. Pay? I thought Yoku would pay for it. I don't want money. What I'm asking for is a very specific thing. You're the only one who can give it to me. I think it slides to the trigger. I want your blood. You know how special it is. Witch blood, yeah. Witch blood? Indeed, my partner here will collect it in a minute. I'll give you the eardrum once we're done. Hmm. Wait, isn't that the... Wait, are they talking about the whole witch thing that we read about on the, um... Volta... I thing? Because it did talk about a, uh... Witch, uh, thing they were working on. Fine, but if you have any fun in building this, then I... It won't be necessary. Still in a chair and roll up the sleeves on my right arm. I keep a hold of my shotgun with my left. One of them places a tourniquet to my arm and begins to draw my blood, collecting it in a small container. Blood can fetch at extremely high places, prices on the black market, so I'm not surprised in the slides that they ask for this kind of payment. What is witch blood? Scylla didn't tell you? Well, she's just as special as you, Mara. Mara glances at me. Scylla was one of the experiments of Vela's genetic engineering operations. He could say she's part of a master race. Blood can be very powerful medicine if you use it correctly. It is very expensive on the black market. Wow. Mara. It's okay, I can understand why you wouldn't want to talk about it. Nevertheless, the project ended a long time ago. We're done. Roll it down. Roll my sleeve down and Sal hands me a bag with everything I need to fix Mara. A tiny plastic device comes with a set of fine looking wrenches and screwdrivers. They look very similar to the ones the mechanic used. Well, now you have the tools in the eardrum. But how? But do you know how to install it? I'll figure it out. Are you sure? Can you come in with us? I could give you a hand. I'm sure I don't want anything to do with you. Come on, Mara. We're leaving. Mara knows and comes with me. Yeah, I want to get the fuck out of here before anything goes downhill. They're leaving. All teams, hold your position and wait for my command. You retreat. They're the place walking backwards. Can't wait to get out of this hole. Grab Mara and run out of the way we came in. It's hard, but I managed to slip through the market. Push people around and get lost in the crowd. Don't stop running until we get to the train station, where I brought the first one I find. It was close right behind me, but we make it. It's safe, and I still had the bags with the tools. Hold Mara in my arm and look her in the eyes. Been afraid for her. Why is this happening to me again? I thought I'd been learned that lesson years ago, but it seems this wasn't the case. Can't avoid the way I... Can't avoid feeling the way I do towards her. Dawn. I'm not gonna let Yoko hear the end of this. We have to wait for a bit until we can take the next train back home.
Ooh, finally left that place, huh? It wasn't that bad. I had fun. <laughs> Is there anything you don't find fun? A lot of things, but this was exciting. A bit scarier, though. Who are all those people? I don't know. I don't really pay much attention. If I had to guess, though, probably some kind of illegal black market cyborgs or androids. More important thing is we got out of there in one piece. Because who knows what could have happened to, a to us in a place like that. But you're a cop. You could have arrested them. And it's not that easy. <laughs> Things aren't so simple. Yes, I'm a cop, but these people usually don't let you just arrest them. It would have been absolute chaos. It wouldn't have done any good. Can't let anyone know we were there. Besides, I don't give a damn what those hackers do. If I do arrest them, others would take their place. I wonder if they felt a nervous. Sure, they don't like me making taking Mara so close to the border. It hasn't been very wise of me to stay so close to Velta while having one of the androids. Hmm, what about the Yellow Ocean? Will you take me there someday? Eh, someday. Okay. Catching my breath, but it looks like Mara's perfectly fine. Sitting on the bar, at the bar of the wagon since we're alone inside. Now she swings her legs as she looks at the floor. I know what she is thinking. Her thoughts similar to those of a normal human? What are you thinking about? Well, I'm thinking about how happy I am to live with you. Yeah? Remember my old family, back in the laboratories? Things were fine with them, but I was stuck in the same places. I could barely leave and I constantly felt like an object. It was nice, but I felt dull. Ever since I came to live with you, I've been doing things I only knew from stories. It's been exciting, even if it's dangerous. I'm glad. Well, this makes me feel strangely happy. I don't can feel like a runner, but I'm more like a rescuer. Maybe it's too self-righteous, but I think I did rescue her. Now it's my responsibility to take care of her. We can arrive at our home. Pretty cells are working at full force, so I don't feel tired. Sit down, Mara. Can I fix your ear? Now? Okay. Try not to move around too much. Will it hurt? I hope not. Can you unplug my pain receptors or something like that? Hmm, I don't think about that, to be honest. Well, I didn't think about that, to be honest. Don't want to mess around in your head too much. You're going to have to endure the pain. Why not? I trust you. You know you can do it. You just don't want to do it, that's all. Can't bring myself to do it. Don't want to accidentally break something and change the way she works. Even opening her is scary enough. Go and open your skull. Tell me if it hurts. Close your eyes and I hope everything turns out fine. Notice that my hands are shaky. For some reason, part of me expects to see a human brain inside. Carefully separate her skin sheets with one of the tools so I can open her head. Everything is perfectly sealed, so I have to be extremely cautious not to break anything. Or leave any marks. I finally managed to open a skull. Everything is fully mechanical, but the blood and pul pulsations are still there. Does it hurt? No. <clears throat> Great, you can relax then. If this doesn't hurt, then nothing will. I think you'll feel pain when something breaks abruptly. Thankfully, your cranial st structure is pretty close to a lens. The ear component is right on the outer layer, so what I have to do is take out what is left from the old eardrum and install the new one. As long as the new part's fully compatible, shouldn't have any problems with it. How long do you think this is going to take? Going to take some time. We can talk while I do it, so don't worry. I couldn't get used to listening to music with only one ear. I feel so awful not being able to listen to surround effects. <laughs> Looked up the eardrum brand. It's really good. I'm surprised that they gave it to us, <coughs> to us in exchange for our blood. I thought you said as medicine, not some kind of ritual, but I couldn't expect anything from, com com uh, there, from someone like Sal. What if they used my eardrum to spy on us? 
Does it really matter? I think they really do. Pretty sure they were remotely controlled. Probably very far away from here. Have you thought about what Sal was so interested in you? Heavens no. Probably just some pervert. Looks too young to be a pervert. Like age matters. Probably doesn't look like that android in real life. He talked as if there were a lot of them, but they all use the same name. I don't know, think about it. Pretty creepy. Hmm. Hey, will they really take me to? Will you really take me to the Yellow Ocean one day? You mentioned that a bit. Why do you want to? Why do you keep talking about it? I want to go to the beach. There's an artificial one at the end of the district. It's just an artificial lake, but it's pretty big. Don't freak out, but it's just when I was little, dreamt of a huge sea full of yellow waves. Maybe I'll see in the future. <laughs> so that's the deep truth of your new android. From Clive Wentz. <laughs> Don't laugh, I really did. Maybe I'm destined to go there. Or maybe it has something to do with the Sinatia incident. God, I fucking don't know. <laughs> do you believe in destiny? I don't know. Never really thought about it. Do you think I was destined to live with you? No, I don't believe in destiny. I think it's just an excuse for people who don't ca take care of their own lives. Whilst we're talking about destiny, I still wonder what reason they had in mind to make you. An android, you serve no actual purpose. I always felt a less plain when they came up with you. Maybe they're just trying to create me, and that's it. I was their actual purpose. How come they weren't scared of accidentally creating a killer android? Don't seem to have any limitations in your programming, after all. I don't, just like any other human. But it's never stopped anyone from having kids, has it? Everyone thinks they'll be a good parent. But we're talking about this big corporation. They always profit from everything they make. Why are you so distrustful of androids? treat them horribly, and I don't know, don't think you're being honest with me. Not that I don't trust androids, I just can't trust their creators. And I don't treat you like crap, not anymore at least. I'm really sorry for being rude back then. Ah, I know you're nice to me, but you know what I'm talking about. Meh, whatever. Let's just say I've had quite a few problems with androids in the past. Problems? Like, love problems? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and why is that a problem? I mean, sex with an android is legal, but that's irrelevant. Isn't relevant now. I don't feel like talking about it. I just can't trust androids again. They're all fake, and natural. That all sounds logical, but I couldn't see it back then. Do you think the same about me? Well, I used to, but you have a singularity, so you're not like them, right? I don't know. Of course you are. Beep beep. <laughs> Silly. You're the android I know that has a heartbeat. Almost like you, if you, almost like if you had a heart. Huh. Oh, I can hear that from the other side again. Perfect. We're done then. Let me pull everything back. Carefully put back a scan just perfectly. There were no marks in sight. Mallory gets up. Not sure she has died to listen to music again. Before she can leave, she bends over and plants a soft kiss on my cheek. Oh, so cute. Thank you. At least we're gonna have some nasty moments before everything goes tits up. After a few seconds, my brain finally starts to work again. Kids brought back so many memories, both good and bad. Mara went on to listen to some music, and now that both her ears are awake, she can finally enjoy it fully again. So I had to head down to bed. It's Tuesday, so there's still a long way until the weekend. Wake up in the middle of the night. Once I feel Mara lying down next to me. Did she just take my hand? I think she fully trusts me after what happened today. It makes me happy. I know I was distrustful of her, but I never thought she'd make me feel the same way about me. 